Hello people, in this video we want to look at hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy HOCM or HCM they can say. Basically here it is cardiomyopathy. It's one of the types of cardiomyopathies. Here the word you have to focus on is in myo. Myo is what? Muscle. So basically the muscle of the heart has some issue. Cardiomyopathy is here. Uh, one of the variety of this cardiomyopathy is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. This you will see in teenagers guys. So young teenagers. Uh, uh, adults you can say teenagers so basically in teenagers what you're seeing is uh, this is the uh, septal uh, septa between the uh, right ventricle and the left ventricle you can see that septal hypertrophy guys and also the free wall is also thick right did you get it so the septal hypertrophy is there and the free wall is also thick so you can see how the left ventricle is so small it is actually banana shaped the banana shaped it's written here guys you can see it is banana shaped left ventricle Okay, so what else have they marked here? There is less blood to, uh, there is less blood that fills in the left ventricle and so, that, so there will be less blood supply to the body. Okay, the atria will have high pressure because how much it cannot send anything to left ventricle. So atria will also have high pressure. Okay, so basically another thing you should know here guys. So guys, look at the uh, exit from the left ventricle. That is look at the uh, this one see exit from the left ventricle we are asking you to look at so just look at this one see from the left ventricle the oxygenated blood has to leave isn't it why are the aorta so here you can see this path is so narrow so that is why you have murmurs in these people see here this path from the left ventricle out is very narrow because of the septal hypertrophy okay so that is one thing then here you can see the mitral valve is moving anteriorly whenever uh, there is systole. So systole uh, will cause an anterior displacement of the mitral wall which is called as SAM that is systolic anterior displacement of the mitral valve. In this condition there can be sudden death guys so just remember are you focusing guys um, basically this is an autosomal dominant condition so you can understand it's a dominant condition if one of the parent has it the child gets it right and uh, uh, in familial cases that is this one where is the defect you will see that the defect will be on chromosome 14 the beta myosin abnormality okay abnormality of the beta myosin heavy chain gene okay so it is dominant remember quite dangerous isn't it so there is hypertrophy of what of the of the ventricle septa right what else are they telling that uh, the ventricle cannot fill there is impede uh, there is uh, diastolic filling is affected right then you can see what else hypertrophy of septum we told you this dynamic lv outflow tract obstruction this we showed you the outflow has to go via this narrow passage so there is dynamic lv outflow tract obstruction okay it's a dynamic obstruction that is it keeps changing because of the septal thickness so whenever there is systole that time there will be obstruction the, there is more tunneling Focus guys, let me just repeat what I said. So basically if this is the uh, outflow, here you can see the outflow here. Are you able to see this color is good? See the outflow. Basically here they are saying dynamic LV outflow obstruction. Isn't that what they are saying? See here. Dynamic LV outflow track obstruction. Okay. Then what else are you seeing? There is anterior motion. So during systole okay and systolic anterior motion of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve so this is SAM okay so there can be mitral regurgitation also because the left ventricle is so small where will the blood go if it cannot go out of the iota there can be mitral regurgitation also in this people so that is what the textbook says guys look at this so uh, the blood is not able to enter LV it is not able to leave LV also because this path is very narrow so what can there be? There can be mitral regurgitation. Okay, mitral valve also will move anteriorly. The anterior leaflet will move anteriorly. There can be mitral regurgitation. So many things they have mentioned. Symptoms in these people, standard, okay, standard the cardiac symptoms, guys. Dyspnea because of the atria being affected, isn't it? So the um, uh, lungs are affected, isn't it? So let's take a nice color to mark this way. So dyspnea can be there, angina, chest pain, then syncope, standard because of uh, cerebral flow being affected. There can be transient loss of consciousness, palpitations and sudden death. So basically sudden death, you should remember, very important. Uh, this is HOCM. 
So basically, this free wall thickness, which we saw, if it is greater than 30 millimeter, they have a chance of sudden death. Okay, and uh, palpitations. Uh, basically, these people have um, uh, what do you call that? See here, they've written here arrhythmias, supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia. So many things they have mentioned. Okay, how's it going, people? We are looking at HOCM. Let's continue. So basically, what are the signs? So in these people, what will you see, guys? You can guess because the uh, blood is not able to come out of left ventricle. The A2 will close later. So they are talking about signs. So when you listen to the person, the heart sounds, what will you see? More so, we'll, we should say, what will you hear? See, basically what, what will happen, the blood is taking a long time to come out of the left ventricle. So the uh, aortic valve will close later. So what will happen if A2 a closes later if a closes later so if a closes later so a2 p2 is what you know of the second heart sound isn't it? so here you have the heart sounds look at this so basically what happens in s2 in s2 a2 and p2 close so if a2 is going to close later what will happen there will be a narrow s2 so a2 will go on moving 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 sometimes it can overtake p2 or it can be same as p2 so you can have a single S2, you can have a reverse split S2 where it becomes a P2A2. You got it guys? So A2 will go later and later. Okay. So come on guys, when do you think you will hear the murmur? Very good. So uh, basically the aortic valve has to open. Once the aortic valve opens and the blood is trying to get out, you can hear murmur. So the murmur will be after A2 opens, that is after ejection click. So it will be ejection systolic murmur. Very easy, isn't it? So, where is A opening? Yes, A is opening here. That's the ejection click which comes after S1. A is opening. So, here will be your ejection click and after that you can hear the murmur. So, this will be an ejection systolic murmur. Very similar to your aortic stenosis which we have marked here. Very similar to aortic stenosis you will have HOCM murmur. So, here the textbook says late systolic murmur because of outflow obstruction there can be mitral regurgitation also. So, you will have to look at if there is murmur because of mitral regurgitation then uh, whenever there is mitral valve prolapse right prolapse is there because it's something is uh, pushing so much of stress on the mitral valve also then there can be atrial fibrillation right. So, not only the ventricle the atria is affected right what else are they talking about. They are talking to you about the pulse guys because pulse is, uh, what is pulse? So, something that is coming out of the heart that is what you are measuring isn't it? So, the pulse will be something like this, a, a fast fall and a fast, sorry, fast rise and a fast fall pulse. Okay, that is called that. See normally how the pulse is in systole and diastole what you have. Look at the pulse in this HOCM person. Here you can see there is a fast rise and a fast fall. It is a jerky pulse, there is a double uh, peak kind of a thing here. So, this is a HOCM pulse, it is called as pulses bisferines, rhines, bisferines, bisferins, however you want to say that, okay. So, where will you see this bisferines pulse in HOCM, okay. Fast rise, fast fall. So, the signs they have told you, jerky pulse, where are we here, jerky pulse, double or triple apex, okay. Then, um, a late systolic murmur, you can have a mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse, you can also have an atrial fibrillation, okay. Then, <clears throat> why can you hear an S4 in this? Because the atria will try to contract so hard to send the blood to the left ventricle, right? So, there can be an atrial gallop. According to me, this is very similar to the aortic stenosis um, uh, murmur, right? The way you draw it. So, you can draw something like this. So, you will have S1 and you will have S2 and then you will have an S1 again here. Let's see. So, how will the murmur be? After the ejection click, you will have a murmur and then you can also have an S4 because of the atrial gallop and the S2 can be narrow split, single S2 or even a reverse split or a paradoxical split S2. Let's proceed guys. Let's look at the differentials for uh, HOCM. Here we are. So, what are the differentials? So, basically what will you see in the ECG? You will see that there is left ventricular hypertrophy, the standard things that you will see in ECG. So, what will you see is that the V1, where is V1 here, V1 will have deep S and V5 will have very tall R and there is some calculation here that SV1 plus R, V5 or V6 will be greater than or equal to 35 centimeter indicating to you that there is left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, then what else do you want to know here? 
X-ray, what will you see? You will see cardiac enlargement. That's not difficult to say. The name itself is what? Hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Very good, guys. Hypertrophic. The name itself says that. Okay. Then, echo. What will you see in an echocardiogram? The free wall will be thick. Very good. You will see septal hypertrophy. Standard things you will write. Very good. And uh, you will see that there is systolic anterior uh, displacement of the mitral valve. Very good. Very good. Okay. What will you see in cardiac catheterization? Banana-like uh, LV cavity. We told you this. Okay. But this is an invasive procedure. Remember. Then you will see that there is dynamic LV obstruction. Outflow obstruction which also you know. Don't you know that much? Yes, you know all that already. Okay. Take a break. Let's continue. Okay. Okay. Then we are still here in the differential what is this differential diagnosis? These should have they should have named it as investigations. Okay. Radio nucleo nuclide. What a kind of a name is this? Nuclide. Radio nuclide studies. You will see asymmetric septal hypertrophy. Okay. Look at this. This is an echo, isn't it? So, yeah. What are we seeing here? So, here you can see left ventricle and here you can see right ventricle. Between those two, you can see a lot of septal uh, hypertrophy, isn't it? That is what I would try to understand here. Right? So, there's a lot of ventricular septal hypertrophy in this echo. Okay. Let's continue with the investigations. Another investigation they have told here is contrast MRI you can do. Okay. Fine. Now, let's move on to the management. So, you know this person has... Uh, HOCM, how will you manage, right? Let's see. So, basically, uh, this is in young people. So, remember, the treatment here is completely different from your other cardiac problems. Okay. So, here they are talking about uh, propranolol, that is beta blocker. Then, uh, they are talking about... Um, so, basically, they want to remove the septal hypertrophy. Okay. So, they are talking about uh, removing this muscle, which is extra. So, this is very easy to understand. You can do a ablation treatment alcohol ablation treatment give alcohol and reduce it the hypertrophy you can also do some uh, septal you can do septal my myectomy or myotomy so you're just removing this hypertrophied muscle isn't it guys is it uh, clear so you just basically you have this uh, muscle right and uh, this extra muscle they want to remove so it's pretty clear for you to understand isn't it also, what are they talking about? They are saying you can give uh, people who are, you know, in risk for sudden death, right? You can give them an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. So, this is called as ICD. So, this is a very important thing. So, it can shock them, looks like, and it can regulate. So, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, cardioverter, verter, cardioverter, remember that name. It's implantable, so it's inside them defibrillator so there is a fibrillation you're defibrillating it this is a whole topic by itself cardioversion or dc shock is a safe means of terminating when various sticky arrhythmias and restoring sinus rhythm here you can see the uh, implantable cardioversion defibrillator it is inserted under the skin the electrodes are in the heart see from here the electrodes are going and they're going in the heart but looks like why they put it on the right side okay electrodes inserted into vein leading to heart so, it is uh, going into the veins leading to the heart. Okay. See, what you see is it is kind of away from the heart. It's not exactly in the heart. See, here also you can see it's away from the heart. And there are some electrodes which are going into the heart via the veins. We are almost at the end of this video, guys. Don't worry because um, we are already at the treatment, isn't it? So, people, you can give them verapamil, right? And um, you can give diisopyramide. Okay, it is an anti arrhythmic Very good. It also does some, uh, it reduces the obstruction of the outflow looks like. And this one, Verapamil is calcium channel blocker, isn't it? So, it uh, slows down the AV node. So, the heart will need less oxygen looks like. So, basically, what else are you going to talk about here? So, basically, all what we have, you have to give, we told you. But do you know that what you should not give? In these people, you should not give standard things that you will give in heart pain like nitrates. You should not give diuretics and all that. It's completely contraindicated. And why? Because what happens is uh, when you do uh, give nitrates, the coronary blood flow, which is already less because of uh, vasodilation, is it? It will become even more less. So, yes, guys, there's a complex here that you should not give nitrates. Okay, what will you not give in these people who have this um, um, HOCM? 
So HOCM, I'm depicting like the septal hypertrophy and the free wall is also thick. Basically, in these people, you should not give nitrates, guys, because if you give nitrates, they'll have worse chest pain. You should not give diuretics. So you will not give the standard treatment that you're thinking of. You will not give in HOCM. Very good. Then let's move on, guys. Uh, sudden death is common in these people because of what? Because of ventricular tachycardia, non-sustained. Remember, it is a uh, ventricle that is affected first right so you can have ventricular tachycardia but later you can have atrial fibrillation etc but the death is more common in people who have ventricular tachycardia which is non-sustained okay and what else guys so basically the common cause of death is this ventricular tachycardia family history will be there because this is a autosomal dominant condition that's it so that's it about hocm bye bye